animation so disgusting you might know it from one frame fukuna girl where did it come from for anyone lucky enough not to know fukuna shoujo 3 is the name of an extremely gory shock animation featuring this machine to put it politely completely rearranging this girl into what one could only describe as an organ lasagna if you haven't seen it by now don't look it up first uploaded in late 2012 to the japanese website pixiv by artist windows me it moved from pixiv to 4chan to facebook spreading like wildfire there was no way to prepare for seeing this thing and no way to forget it once you did. But what kind of artist would make this? It turns out that Windows Me is a very talented pixel artist with no digital footprint. This artist made things that looked like this, made things that traumatized tens of thousands of people, and then completely disappeared. But his or her legacy is here to stay because people will not stop falling for this thing. From meme savvy edits to completely oblivious retweets, Fukona Girl is an ever enduring shock image and a great example of using artistic talent for evil. Um, Hi, my name's Beavers. Hi, Beavers. I'm glad that's the first interaction you've ever had. <laughs> now recording. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Now Recording. Uh, today, on this episode, we have uh, something kind of interesting. We covered a lot of the Leo Convoy Hopeless Peaches drama on the last episode, and it's doing very well. Uh, but I thought, like, maybe we could take, like, a little side quest into other animation drama while also talking about Leo and Hopeless and all those people. And with me today, I also have uh, Beckett of Crabs. What's up, man? Hey, buddy. How you doing? Yeah. Pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, kind of stressed out. Kind of stressed out. <laughs> like, it, <laughs> it, 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 it gets a little to the line, and you're kind of like, all right, where's Mitch? Where is he? Of course, Mitch is not here. Um, he was well, supposed to be he, here. He, he's in a fake country. That's why. Yeah. They yeah. don't. They don't have clocks over there. We didn't send what, them over. With what the, country? Uh, what country is that? Uh, Australia. <laughs> <laughs> he's probably. He's probably been like I don't know, beaten up by a kangaroo or something. It'll, it'll yeah. be some like that. It's in Australia. Yeah. <laughs> Many such cases. Yeah. Well, the thing is, uh, with me today, we have a special guest. Now, I I can't pronounce your YouTube name for the life of me. I've been saying it over <laughs> and <okay>. over. <laughs> what is it, Scumbavich? Scumbagovich. Scumbagovich, yeah, okay. It's okay. it's an old name that I chose uh, when I was a faceless account when I was just an animator, um, but I never really changed it, so it's really it's it's a terrible name, but yeah. thank you for trying. <laughs> so so a little context is Mitch, uh, I guess, was following you on Twitter, and you said something like, "I would love to go on a podcast and derail about deviant art." And Mitch was mm -hmm. like, "Hey, how about our podcast?" And you said yes. Yeah. So then I got in touch with you. Uh, Mitch, of course, is not here right now. He's the one who kind of like booked the person, but. Uh, needless to say, we have you here now. When I first got in contact with you about two weeks ago, maybe you were at you were sitting at like one thousand subscribers, or maybe close to two thousand. Your shorts are now blowing up. You're at like almost ten k. Like I how, think, how, yeah, how... I, I keep refreshing it because I'm kind of wondering if it'll pass ten k during the duration of this podcast. Um, it's yeah. it's it's so crazy. It's unbelievable. So. I, I was looking at some of your shorts, right? And they're actually really good. You, uh, I think I've told you this already. I don't know if you've heard this before, but you do have like a very Justin Wang like vibe. Are you a fan of Justin Wang? Interesting. Uh, we're friends. Like awesome. we're mutuals. Yeah. I think it might be like the the New York accent, and then the stuff you uh, cover. That's so kinda... funny. Everybody that everyone comes back to the accent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like I said, you're like a mixture of uh, Shoe on Head and Justin Wang, basically. Like <laughs> that's yeah. what. No, that's, that's I what mean it's... that's very cool. I'm very flattered. They're yeah. both very accomplished. Yeah. So what were you doing before this? Uh, because you started off the gate with a short with 47,000, like right off like right off the bat. Like, uh, were you planning on doing this or was this just something you, you know, did for that fun? Was, that was crazy. Really quick thing about that. I just started. Mm -hmm. um, can we curse on here? Am I allowed? Yes. Yes. 100%. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Excellent. Um, I woke up arbitrarily like in December. This was very recent. And I just decided I'm going to do this now and see if it works. And I started shooting these short videos out everywhere. And I very quickly came upon the thing that I wanted to talk about. I really like terrible art. I love terrible fan art. I love terrible fetish art. I love art that's so bad that it's good. Um, mm -hmm. And it just so happened that at the time that I started doing that, this story with verbal ace broke. And I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. This is a perfect thing to talk about. And it's trending. And it's like... In, okay, maybe this is controversial, but in my opinion, I did not like the look of the video. I thought it was very poorly made, but whatever. Um, you have what, in my opinion, is <laughs> some shitty looking art with an absolutely wild story behind it. And it all comes back to some guy and his uh, need to coom. And I was just mm -hmm. like, this is a perfect thing to discuss. And it's just the timing was right, which is why that short got so many views. Um, 
And then I realized this is just what I want to talk about forever. And, um, you know, I guess there's an audience for it. Like, clearly, you seem to like it. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, no. And it's just like, there's so much bad art out there, dude. Like, I could talk about this forever. <laughs> because there's literally... And, and it never stops getting made. People are constantly coming up with new ways to make the worst thing you've ever seen. And someone's got to document it. So that's your long answer. <laughs> that's 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 actually, You're doing the Lord's work, you know, because... I, I'm not. I, a big... I don't see any. Oh, sorry. I don't mean to cut it. But no, just real no, quick. No, go ahead. Go I, ahead. Real quick thing, because I get very heated about this. I'm gonna spurt for like a second. Sure. People love to do like meme explainers and rabbit holes and things like that, but I can't seem to find anyone who just talks about how the worst art you've ever seen, like why it's made, who made this, is this person still alive? You know, like really basic questions like that. Yeah. And I was like, this is great. This is like an amazing gap in the market. Yeah, because I, 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 I know nothing about like this whole art community or any of these communities. I just popped in here one day. I, I came in through commentary and I saw what all the, all this lore with all these artists and all these crazy shit they get into. And I'm like, what? I mean, I don't know if it's autism or uh, just like uh, immaturity at an adult age. I don't know. It's just it, it's just the weirdest shit. And uh, it, it's really interesting to see it, it, it grow. And it's great to see you with all this lore and this knowledge. So I can finally get like a background on a lot of these things, you know? So, uh, I mean, good on you. You mentioned uh, the verbal ease stuff. Now, uh, this is what I know is this, there's this YouTuber who does like drawings of himself and uh, like cartoon drawings. And he's got like a backwards hat and some t somehow he, he got a lot of interaction, a lot of subscribers. And at some point he wanted to pay 50, 50 K to like have sex with one of the has been hotel characters in an animation. It's like, uh, a, so it's like a rap battle. Uh, yeah. Channel. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. So the TLDR of it is that, uh, he was, I don't think so much anymore, but sometime in the last five years, I think if, if I remember correctly, like 2019, 2020, his channel was booming. He had several very uh, viral videos. He made these rap animations with really popular characters. Like you had Pennywise and the Joker and Thanos, you know. So these mm -hmm. are things that people tuned into. Like a largely a younger audience, which is part of where the controversy came from. Um, and he, I think he had like three or four million subscribers. Like he was very successful at what he did. And the rub with this has-been hotel thing is that it was meant to be private. This was right. meant to be a project that would not see the light of day. It was just for him. But through various means, things got leaked about it. And I think part of the reason that it got leaked was because this project was becoming such a huge endeavor for him financially that he put his other projects on hold. And he kept extending deadlines. And his videos were no longer six months apart. They were like eight months apart, 12 months apart. And people were starting to, to notice, especially his fans. And the performance of his channel was dropping off. And then there was the fateful day of the Discord leak where the conversations came to light and there were these illusions that he was making to this crazy price tag. And then people started to dive into it and put two and two together. And then the animation was leaked, which again, it was never in... As much as I think it's cringy, I can understand mm -hmm. the fact that it was clearly... You know, it wasn't meant to see the light of day. Which, technically, so, uh, that's was, not harming anyone, but... Was it, was it just for a spank bank? Like, was it just... Just yes, for... yeah, it was just for the coom. It was the most expensive coom <laughs> in the animation community that we know of so far. But I'm sure another one will come along any day now. There are always things like this happening, I think. It's like $50,000 for just to something to off to is just insane. He, to he me. stresses that it was 47000 but, oh. you know, oh. <laughs> I, personally, I, I personally don't know if that's meaningful at this stage. But I do, I do feel bad for him. You know, it is... Like, that sucks. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the rub. It sucks. Yeah, I mean, that could be like a nice car. That could be uh, like a, a condo, like or, or anything like that. And you fucking, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna level with you. I don't understand that. I, I, don't, I don't take this the wrong way. I don't understand the lack of nudity in this fucking video that he had made. If you're gonna spend for, what forty seven thousand dollars on something, and your character, your OC, doesn't even get fucking laid in it. I don't. I don't know what the fuck is like. Chris Chan didn't spend this amount of money, and Chris Chan at this point has turned themselves into the incarnation of Jesus Christ. So, so there's two <laughs> things here that you might find very interesting because I I have a ton of like videos that I'm scripting and I'm always researching this stuff lately, and I have noticed a tendency among fetish art. A ton of it 
is non-sexual in in at least superficially, right? Like sure. inflation, for instance, I think a lot of people kind of vaguely understand like that's a you know that's kind of a deviant art fetish, but mm. it's not inherently sexual, at least not in its presentation. And by the same token, I've noticed that people who drop like insane amounts of money on these commissions, a lot of the time it tends not to be explicitly sexual. It's just whatever this person fixated on, and that's just what it is. And on top of that. You should also consider that artists are not always willing to draw not safe for work stuff. Mm -hmm. They might be willing to accept a lot of money to do stuff that's weird, but not safe for work tends to be its own category of artist. Yeah. Sure. Do you think it's like a tease thing? Like I want to get like I don't want the full nudity or I don't want the full sexual content. I just want a little bit to tease me or something. You know, like for maybe some people yeah. for some people that's probably like more scintillating than the actual yeah. thing. Yeah. And maybe it's like donating to a girl's OnlyFans who doesn't do nudity, just bikinis or something. And maybe that's like the way they think. It's like they like. Well, bikinis. also, have you have you guys seen the video itself? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think I've seen a little bit of it. I don't know if I've seen the right. whole thing. So the premise is that he's being chased by the. I mm -hmm. I don't know anything about Hasman Hotel. I literally only know the character's name. I I choose not to watch that. I don't. <laughs> I have a lot of thoughts on Hasman Hotel, but anyway. Yeah, yeah. We'll go, so, we'll get to them. We'll get to them because uh, so do I. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think the fetishy aspect of it for him in particular, and this is purely speculation, is the fact that she is obsessed with him, right? And it's the mm -hmm. chase. It's the fact that she wants him by any means possible. So for him, like the climactic event, and that's not even a pun, would be when she has him scrapped to the bed right at the end of the video, and she's about to do whatever she does. I think that yeah. is more enticing to him and maybe to people who have fetishes similar to his than just regular anime or animated porn because that's freely available basically anywhere you know mm -hmm. it's there's nothing exciting about that it's it's really interesting you say that so I, I think part of the reason that i've found the art com stuff so fascinating uh with lyo convoy and all the other things recently um is because i i think the first internet thing i ever became like really interested in keeping looking at over time as a weird community was the brony community and uh like cartoon analysis groups uh just just because of how weird everything was around it but if you look at a lot of the things that they seem to have wanted it was they wanted to exist in this world it was really important to them like their characters were like hooking up they they'd have a fav favorite pony but that wasn't like innately sexual it was hey i could have a relationship with that pony so it's really interesting that you draw the conclusion kind of this uh, the non-sexual element as part of the fetish itself i've never thought about it that way but yeah when you look at things like inflation or I, hell even even things like vor which is really fucked mm -hmm. up um but it's it's not just this sort of big tits huge dick kind of is, uh, is vor eating people yeah. yeah yeah okay yeah that i always get that confused like uh war and inflation and all that I think inflation was something that the uh, I don't know if you know this drama. Uh, Fra Can I, do I call you Frankie or? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You okay. don't have to say the whole mouthful, and, no <laughs> and nobody in real life calls me that, so don't yeah. worry about it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, there was like a pyrocynical drama where uh, he was uh, getting inflation porn of uh, from like I, I don't know if they were I think they were a minor or something, but they were drawing like inflation porn for him or something, uh, mm. and it was like really really weird. So I don't I don't really get this whole. I don't get this whole inflation thing. I don't get the vor thing. This is like Well, let me clarify. Just because some just because the presentation of a fetish, and I'm not a sexologist, so this you're just hearing yeah. my opinion here. So yeah, nobody yeah, yeah. sue me, please. Just because the presentation of the fetish isn't obviously sexual to like a normie onlooker, yeah. It doesn't mean that someone's not getting their jollies off. So, you know, right. for instance, <laughs> I don't know the pyrocynical story, but in the event that someone's having someone under the age of 18 draw them, Mm -hmm. non-sexual looking fetish art yeah. it is a fetish the root yeah. of it is sexual in some way yeah. and that's not you know that's not okay that's completely unacceptable yeah. so i know people like try and talk around that but absolutely not if there if someone under the age of 18 is drawing something that gets you off even if you don't yeah. touch yourself to it no for, for the record for the <laughs> it's record, not more complex yeah for the record i don't know if it was someone under the 18 drew it or he was talking to a minor or something like that it's been a long time since that drama oh i'm off. not even referring to, yeah, yeah, to yeah. Pyrocynical i just, yeah, no, I'm just i don't I'm know just the saying, story so. I, i'm protect i'm protecting myself from <laughs> not you <laughs> <laughs> no I'm, I'm, I'm being transparent i don't even know yeah. what that's about so i'm not going to speculate yeah yeah fair enough uh so what happened to, is verbally still making content or is he kind of ran away from the internet like what's going on with that 
So I think two or three weeks after the big story broke with the video, he released a video of himself explaining his case. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't seen it in quite a while, so I'm not sure. I don't, I was never subscribed to him, so I don't follow him. But let me, I'm going to look right now and see what's on his channel. Probably as with most drama, regardless of the topic, he's probably just going to wait for it to blow over and come back. And there is this rumor that uh, part of the story is that he went bankrupt. But that's just, you know, that's for the sake of scandal. I don't think he did. I don't mm -hmm. think this man blew everything he ever owned on some shitty fetish art to be honest with you uh latest upload two weeks ago hundred two thousand views i think he's doing all right is that okay okay so he's kind of like made a little comeback i guess and he's doing his thing uh this will be a bump in the road because this is yeah. not going to be a hot topic forever it's just too niche right it, and the thing is like the there's so much uh degeneracy in the art community like it it's not even that like it's the money that's crazy like the other stuff's not even that big of a deal like uh, in our community, or not our community, but the community we've been covering in the art community, there's a literally a guy who dresses up like a, a lion to hunt pedophiles. Wait, you know? that lion thing wasn't like just the username? No, no, no he dresses. He dresses what? Up like he's a, a furry. furry. He's, yeah, he's he defends this adamantly and says he's not. Wait, a furry. I'm bugging. Are you Never serious? Be. Yeah. yeah. No, I, oh my god. I, I, yeah, actually, I have. I'm gonna look okay. for a picture real quick. Uh, uh, Becky, go ahead and explain. I wasn't just expecting like, that. Yeah, explain a little bit about Leo. <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit just a little bit so so uh Lyo convoy originally started and came from the brony community uh back in the day we're talking nearly a decade ago now and um over time he got more involved in like uh, a the acc or uh, art commentary community and uh he began he, he linked up with someone named hopeless peaches there was a scandal uh, way back when called uh, like the Toon Critic scandal, which was a YouTuber called Toon Critic called Zach, who groomed like a fourteen-year-old through My Little Pony ERP. Uh, he did it to somebody else as well. It was it was incredibly it was incredibly fucking weird. But that kind of created this environment where you know the, there was clearly an attention uh, like an, an audience for going after groomers. So, uh, yeah, that started happening, and then he basically, through a series of servers, which is uh, the most recent one's called the Senate, basically they find people who are weird in the community or doing something, and this can be anything from, hey, you stole some artwork, to, hey, you did a racism, to, hey, you groomed some kids, uh, and then they put them in calls with about 60 to 100 people in a Discord call, and uh, berate them for hours at a time until they mentally break. Yeah, they berate and, the the person accused of doing that. You're saying, yeah, not yeah. It, sometimes it's not even the person that's accused; it's a person that <laughs> knew the person that's accused, or person <laughs> like that knew the person who knew the person that's accused, or the, like they were part of the server or something like that. Mm. And you get these people in the Senate, and they're, they're berating this person, and they're talking. You can hear this person who's who they're going after is talking, and you can tell they're not all cognitively there, right? And it gets really weird because, like, that's so sad. It it is. It, that's it, not it, even it, funny. If they yeah. if they thought that this was a serious allegation, they would go to the authorities. And I suspect that the reason they do it over Discord is because deep down they probably know there's no there there. Yeah. That's that's yeah. insane. I think it's a lot of a lot of ego has to do with it. A lot of like uh, a lot of these people have this weird like. Uh, we got to get rid of Discord, man. This is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, like, this this predates Discord. This was happening like this. This these communicate community came out of Skype, for fuck's sake. I mean, it's yeah. It's what's a good way to put it is um that community is kind of a remnant of uh the way the internet used to be. Yeah, about five to ten years ago. Uh, you would get shit like this, and you had it in kind of the bud sports community. Uh, it's just that they happen to do it to uh, people with serious mental illnesses and children. Literally children. Lyo, Lyo Convoy argued with a 15-year-old, uh, threatened to turn up at his house, and when that didn't work, he phoned this kid's school and reported him as a potential school shooter. Oh my god. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it's fucking insane, uh, the route they go. And what I was saying is like, they almost have like this uh, real anime way of thinking. So they, they project whatever character they have in their head onto their online character. So they're, 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 you hear like a lot of like anime speeches and like, I'm looking for justice. Don't you understand? You know, stuff like that. 
And it, it, it's it's some of the most cringe stuff we've ever seen. And then you add in the whole hope. Are you familiar with Hopeless Peaches at all? Yes, that's one of the only parts of this story that didn't have five million moving pieces that I could yeah. kind of keep up with. I just binge watched um, uh, Cecil McFly's video on the whole drama like four years ago was really informative. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, and so to, let me know if I'm right about this one. So Hopeless Peaches has now aligned herself with Leo or Lyo, mm -hmm. and yeah. they're they're like LARPing as predator hunters now. Is that correct? It's like Leo's LARPing as a predator hunter, and then Hopeless Peaches is kind of like, I guess, like it's they had this weird relationship where uh, it was like father daughter. Uh, where wait they, a minute, how how what is the age difference between them? I think, I th Hopeless is like twenty four. <laughs> And then Lyo's like 30, 38, 37, 38. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. This is demented. <laughs> I, is. I really don't think everybody deserves internet access. I'm going to be so honest with you. <laughs> no, yeah. The thing is, like, the stuff you cover, it, it doesn't even, it doesn't even get into like the weird, like, it's crazy how all this art will, will, will create these weird sub communities that have their own little cultures and stuff. And all, they're doing all this unhinged shit in Discord servers and like, before that, even in Skype. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, uh, I think like things like Has Been Hotel are really interesting for this. There's like entire communities that have popped up just obsessed with Has Been Hotel. This happened with Steven Universe as well. Steven Universe fans like bullied Has been a girl. Hotel to is just the bizarro suicide. Steven Universe for these people. Yeah. Well, it's, it's the next stage because it was so it sort of went like My Little Pony, then Steven Universe. Now it's Has Been Hotel. And all of them have. Really weird shit attached to them. Uh, like in the case of like Steven Universe, like the shit Rebecca Sugar was doing in that show got so strange that it's like, uh, what do you mean by that? Rebecca became like a meme. So, mm -hmm. cause she'd be like, yeah, it's fine. They're space Nazis, but we can forgive them. And everyone was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're genociding people. What are you? What are you talking about, Rebecca? But like, people get like really attached to this, and you can kind of see this on Twitter and like other places that are uh, a bit more weird, where people's entire personalities become these cartoons. Yeah, no, it's like their entire personality, and it's it's weird to me because I feel like I, I we got a little pushback in a comment because they were like, because I said something like, "This is what happens when you leave your child in front of the Cartoon Network for too long," you know, as a joke, and they were like, "Um, well, oh yeah, leave, oh yeah, totally, leave your children in front of Cartoon Network." Yeah, that'll do. They, okay, yeah, that's great advice. But no, what I was saying, like, your child gets caught up in these cartoons, and then they get like this weird autistic obsession with them, and then they start daydreaming about like dating them or interacting with them and, and they they it's like arrested development basically and they start uh going into discord servers pretending to be uh associates of these characters or like they're projecting whatever cartoon character they love into their 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 internet lifestyle uh and it just what turns is into the average age of these viewers because that's something i have not been able to pin okay, down so so the average age of kind of art commentary community is between 14 and 24. Okay, yeah. that I I have I need no further information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I but, think I figured out. <laughs> yeah, and then you got the ones that are like thirty eight years old who can't, like I said, that like can't mature, so they they're stuck on this this whole fucking uh like Leo Combo, for instance, he's like big into Thundercats, right? That's like that's like what he talked about a lot. So you, it's funny. His channel is he's either doing like a review on Thundercats or he's like hunting pedophiles. And it's like the, the videos that are him hunting pedophiles in the community are get like 50,000 views. And the view videos with like about Thundercats get like 2,000. So it's like he's uh, encouraged to keep doing this through monetary gains. And now he's here. There is a little update on the Hopeless Peaches and Leo Convoy stuff. Hopeless Peaches has totally thrown Leo Convoy under the bus, said that Leo was abusive, said their like uh, family dynamic was abusive, said that uh, at some point uh, Hopeless Peaches was age regressing. So and age regressing during a speech with leo so there was a whole google doc but in the google doc at the end she takes a swing at uh are you familiar with omnia when that, that was covered in cecil mcfly's video like, yes uh, yes yeah. i am omnia and uh her boyfriend i can't he changes boyfriend. his name a lot yeah yeah, Former yeah boyfriend uh, what's what's the username now because i know it changes it, well i, I just call, i call him i think it was it's zay now but i, think, yeah. zay. I always just that's yeah. it that's it yeah yeah yeah, so yeah, I'm familiar with Omnia and Zay insofar as they had some separate drama where they just kept like fighting each other over something I could not possibly understand. Yeah. And they're tangentially related well, to it all went this. To court. <laughs> oh. 
Well, that's that's real fighting. Well, that's yeah, not, yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. So, uh, so it was Kai and Omnia versus Hopeless, right? And then they made a video, a bunch of videos on Hopeless, and then after that, Kai, Kai and Omnia, who were living living together, uh, they got into a domestic dispute, which caused Kai to be arrested and charged with assault, I guess. And there was this whole thing. Uh, Kai like hacked uh, Omnia's YouTube channel and uh, deleted the channel. And took a bunch of stuff, and then Bakai says, like, oh, I wasn't, no, that's wrong, and I, I didn't hit her like that, she hit me for, like, it turned into this whole thing that just became drama on the internet. So uh, that was real, as opposed to just slap fighting, right? Like, something actually happened, because I've yeah. noticed this, yeah. this is just me, I have a, I have a very hard time with, like, things that are subjective and hypotheticals, mm -hmm. yeah. and when internet drama like this happens... And people use words that refer to something serious, like, mm -hmm. you gaslit me, you abused me, you did this, you did that. When mm -hmm. it doesn't refer back to some real life event that actually affected them, it just, I don't know, it totally does my head in. I, I've never seen a community like the ACC that seems to have, like, it's, it's pretty small, it's pretty niche, and yet... You know, th there are multiple court cases that have been attached to this community. There's another one that's just starting that somebody wants to go fund me for. And um, Lyo got taken to court. Lyo got taken to court over, like, to, for, like, to try and get, like, a restraining order against him, some official stuff. And his defense, and I'm not kidding, was to play a Discord call to the courtroom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have a lot so of. I'm having a lot of new opinions on free speech as a result of this information. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it makes you it makes you think again. Like maybe we should take their rights away. You know, maybe we should. You know, just keep them in a room to themselves so they can't leave the outside so world. Here's here's my question. Mm -hmm. As far as the the Lyo drama, mm -hmm. did he actually interact with someone who groomed or touched a child, or are they pointing fingers at someone? they don't like like did did something actually take place or are they all fighting over made-up nonsense yes. because that yes. is the thing yes. that i cannot so, understand so so yes there is a lot of okay see so it's kind of the nature of the community and what it's going to attract um you've got a community with a lot of very young people in it a lot of people in the art community are very very vulnerable because artists are inherently very fucked up or they come from bad home lives or whatever but yes there is a lot of people who have done actual grooming and tried to get minors to send them weird shit or have sexual conversations with minors. Yeah, that, you know, it, it, this is part of the problem. Like, Lyo's a, a schizo, but there are also things like, like, Toon Critic fucking had sexual conversations through erotic roleplay with a 14-year-old. Uh, and I believe that was the age anyway, uh, before someone sees me, but that's what I remember. Uh, video, I fucking, I have stayed away from the video conversation, but apparently he was grooming somebody. Cody Lovely, um, now Cody Lovely's just come back, but like they fell in love with someone called Hypnotist Sappho, and the rumor I've heard is that they were procuring people for Sappho, who is a confirmed be uh, like zoophile and has groomed people. Uh, and like, is grew, like, grew, like a Sappho... fourteen-year-old. Wait, is Hypnotist Sappho the the VR furry? And yes. yeah, 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 Made yeah, a yeah. long video on this yes. person. Was that, is that yeah. the same one? That's yeah. the same yeah. one. Jesus, yeah, they... <laughs> it all. Oh, no, because I actually do know that story. That's that's disturbing. Yeah, well, okay, so all of this interconnects. Like, this is what's kind of fascinating about the art uh, commentary community. If you've heard of somebody weird, like like Lily Orchard, or um, somebody who's like had some sort of history of drama or been accused of something weird, chances are they're probably in some way connected to the art community. It's it's real fucking strange um how how all this links together. But yeah. What yeah, did it's, they it's... mean by this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It it, it 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 just keeps going back and back and back. Like this goes like does it even go back to like the deviant art days, Beckett? Like is that oh I mean I mean, some certainly some of it has grounding, at least in the culture, and yeah. a lot of the people who are around now and they're like late, like the older groups of people who were deviant artists. Yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. I mean, this is why Doodle Tones is a thing, um, right. and so fascinating. I, it was really funny actually. I went on a Chris the Narc stream and told him like Doodle Tones is involved, and he was like, "We, what do you mean Doodle Tones is involved? I thought that person was a fucking myth." 
what is what is going on? I didn't think they were real. <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? They're, they're here. They're, they're involved. They're Lyo's biggest defender. Fucking doodle tights. Yeah, Bizarre. like it, it's opening so many doors. And like we had that Dylan Thomas guy on a live stream. And turns out yeah. Dylan Thomas has a lot of lore too with uh with like Chris Chan and Sonic and all these all, all QB farms and like it just it, like it, the reason why and Frankie I'm sure like you've had this frustration with this drama is the reason why it's so convoluted is you'll find a person and that person has like 10 different dramas with other people but then you look at another person they have 10 different dramas and it's like a web of like art drama that you cannot keep up with at all and it's so convoluted and it's so ridiculous especially from like me an outsider trying to figure all of this out I'm sure you had those frustrations as well it's also difficult because they use they use a lot of very intelligent language to describe just slop. Yeah. They use smart words to describe a situation that did not actually seem to exist in any real timeline, but it sounds it it has an emotional weight of something that it's not, and it's like every time I think I'm getting hooked in and I'm starting to understand what the fuck actually happened. There's no there there. And it's very frustrating. And it gives you this bizarre cognitive dissonance. And it just like, after a while, it kind of makes my eyes glaze over. Because yeah. I, I'm just failing to understand what the hell happened. But that's, yeah. that's, that's how they've <laughs> remained under the radar for so long. I mean, I've got, I've got what am I at now? Like 30 hours of co combined content, maybe more, through different people's channels. Yeah, you my watch own, these like... videos and you just, it's like oh, a that's not watching simulator. The video. That's, that's just me <laughs> streaming. That's just oh me streaming. Heart. That that that's not even accounting for the amount of time I've spent watching this shit offline, digging into things, having uh, like off the record conversations, the occasional interview with somebody from the community. If I include those, it must be like fifty. Mm -hmm. This is this is actually there's no wonder I'm fucking tired. This if, killed me. If you were to put a gun to my head and say, "Explain this drama," Uh, explain this drama in a very well, ver a very well version of this drama. I, I would just ask them to shoot me. Yeah, I, I'm dead. <laughs> I'm gonna die. I'm gonna like pull the trigger. It's over. Like goodbye, <laughs> goodbye, cruel world. I can't explain this. I can't for the life of me. I don't. And uh, like I, I've kind of in commentary, I've kind of developed the reputation of being able to explain dramas and stuff. I this is one drama where I I have no like there's nothing to to stand on with me when it comes to the art drama it's too convoluted that's why we have beckett who has a lot who has a well, it's very uh it's very suicidal right right now <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like i've spent i've spent years looking into weird fucking communities online um and this is this is a lot even for me i I'd, I'd put it this way um i i okay actually do you know what i'll i'll give it a go you want you want a short brief description Ima yes, imagine Imagine if Reddit in like the embodiment of Reddit formed into a person, put a taxidermied lion mask on their face, and then started screaming at children and mentally ill people um for hours at a time uh, while being controlled by a f a fat British person uh, who is hopeless peaches uh, who talks to him like they're a five year old child as what I can only assume to be their ongoing fetish play. Um, and and it just, just while all that's you happening... You think the, the pedo hunter LARP is a fetish? No, I think the the fact that she talks to him like she's a five-year-old oh, okay. child and it's a de uh, like daddy-daughter fetish. Um, and while all this is happening, they are all Games of thrones in each other. They're all behind the scenes, like making alliances, breaking alliances, stabbing people in the back. I think that certain things have been set up and certain people have been set up to ready themselves to be ousted from the community without realizing it. I certainly think Lyo actually ironically was set up by Peaches. Uh, so Peaches came out with a statement as did a load of the mods from this community. Um, but, you know, people who've been around a long time, some of them quite important. And they all said, we can't take this anymore. Lyo's disappointed us all. We're all going to leave and we're going to start a new server called the Supreme Court, which is going to be safe and fun, guys. And then within like a few days, that disintegrated. <laughs> That's <laughs> gone fucking well. Peaches, Peaches came out and called him an abuser. There's no evidence for this anywhere. She's pointing to his abuse of other people, but there's no evidence of him abusing her. If anything, there's evidence of her abusing him and his wife. And yeah, yeah, now now Peaches has gone very quiet again. Uh, I think she's fucked. I think she's done. Time's up by Peaches. I think why Lyo's can't they fucked. Just, why can't they just 
make art. Is that not your stated purpose? I, that's not a joke. Because I, I, I have noticed Frankie, something else, Frankie. and I'm going to say something really mean. But I think I think everyone's going to anticipate this one. Yeah. Why the fuck can't any of these people draw? Like <laughs> they have the option to make art. But I've also noticed that when they use that option, the art's not good. Like, nothing is working here. None of them like each other, and none of them are good at the thing that they profess to be part of. Maybe uh, they should just, you know, I just don't understand. That's the thing that, like, kills me. Because every time I look up one of these artists, and I, like, I know this is mean, but I've, I've noticed this. The art is really bad. <laughs> the art is just not good. I'm not. I, I don't have an artist perspective here, but since you do, like, like, wh wh who use you your eyes. Is... <laughs> you don't have to be an artist. I'm not a very good artist. Use so, your so eyes. I, I, I have to because I know what's going to happen if I don't say something right here. And uh, like, I, yeah, I, I think I, there I are some very talented. Story. Well, no, I know there are some very talented artists uh, in the community. I want to defend those people because uh, I've met some of them and they're really cool people and they do really interesting stuff. Sweep, sweep, um, sweep. Well, like, no, no, I think they're asking about this because I know what I'll know what will happen. It'll be like Beckett was there, he didn't say shit about us. No, I think, well, okay, was. okay, obviously, um, but yeah, like, Doodle obviously, Tones some has been people making yeah. well, Doodle Tones has been making art for like uh, over a decade, and her art is or his art or whatever because I don't know what their pronouns are, is fucking terrible. It's awful. Like, I don't know if you've ever seen Doodle Tones, I will. <laughs> I'll send, you, I'll send you a picture. Hold on. Doodle Tones is so bad that it's even commented on in the ACC. Uh, like, they're, they're aware. They're aware. And, like, it, it's like MS Paint style. I, I don't understand. I don't understand what this is happening, how this happens. Hold on, give me a second. Is it, like a, is it like an ego thing where people are telling them it's good and then it's not? Or... No, it's just, it's just retarded that, like, the. The best Doodle Tones art is ironically, unironically drawn by other people. Right. Um, like this is their work. It's crap. <laughs> I don't completely <laughs> agree with you. Yeah. Um, and I, okay, I feel like I, I was a little harsh, so allow me to rephrase. Um, <laughs> obviously, obviously, this is not the case for everyone. We're only talking about the most vocal and clearly the most unwell members of yeah. whatever this is. Sure. But I have I have to say this. I have noticed a tendency among these people to like lack art fundamentals. And I find it incredibly frustrating because if we could just sidebar really quickly here. Mm -hmm. Um I this jumped out at me. I remember when the um what's her name? The one that Hopeless Peach has gotten to the drama Creep Show Art. Yeah. I was actually about Back to bring her day. up, so good. Oh, okay. Well, I noticed this first with Creep Show Art and then basically everybody that was associated with her, whether friendly or not. Mm -hmm. They all have uh this like quasi anime quasi cartoony style that can only be drawn at a very specific angle and they mm -hmm. kind of have absolutely no fun to, and th th like you can learn these things so i'm not really you know i'm not punching down here because these skills can be learned but i've noticed that they treat art with this incredible seriousness but they pursue it like total hobbyists and i guess when the art itself is not improving or is not fulfilling enough for them Mm -hmm. They can find the next most fulfilling thing, which is just fighting with each other. But I have to point this out: the art sucks, and that's <laughs> me. That's funnier than anything else that's been, that's happened so far. That's yeah. No, so you would say Creepshow's art very low tier. You know, I I never liked it. I used to yeah. I used to watch her channel as background noise, like back in the day when she was coming up before the whole drama thing. Yeah, but. It was just because I like the sound of somebody talking and, you know, she made really long videos and she made them every day. But, uh, no, I, I thought her art was bad. And that's not a moral judgment on the person. You know, mm -hmm. you are not, your character is not a reflection of your ability to draw anime or not. Yeah. But yeah, um, no, I always thought her art was very bad. And I think Hopeless Peach's art is really bad. And I'm not coming at this as some master artist. But it's like, damn, can you guys get your shit together and learn how to draw? And then you can fight all you want. But there's not like, I'm sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> I feel no, no, very strongly going. about no, you're this. Cooking. Yeah, <laughs> I feel very strongly about it. Yeah, Do you know, yeah. it's it's it's, re it's it's really interesting you say that because I feel <laughs> so. I, my mom was an author. I've grown up around artists and writers and musicians. Basically, uh, like all my formative early years and shit. Um, 
And the one thing that has always struck me about kind of people who want to make it as artists versus actual artists and actors and all this shit is there's this like incredible seriousness which you mentioned of like this is so important. But you know, I, I remember talking to um a family member who's a professional actor, has acted in TV and everything else, uh, not like bit parts, like main characters. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, that's really cool that you're doing that. Like, it must be really exciting. And they're like, it's my job. I, I, please don't talk to me about my job. Please. I don't, I don't fucking care. And this is like, and as I got older, I, I noticed this more and more. I talked to authors. Oh, well, how's the new, how's the new book? Don't talk to me about the new fucking book. I don't want to talk about the new book. I hate the fucking new book. Um, because I, it, it's just a job. And it's like, you've gone to somebody who's like, hey, how's things in the, ins at the insurance firm? And like, you can enjoy <laughs> and care about the things that you do, but like this, uh, kind of like seriousness and weight that's put on this uh, is actually not something that I, I, I've personally seen amongst right, people who actually do it professionally. What you bring up is so interesting because you really, you frame it really well. The seriousness with which they take the art is not commensurate with their skill or with real life. And by the same token, the seriousness which with which they take the... Um, the drama that, like, for lack of a better term, just isn't there. You know, you can point your mm -hmm. finger all day and say, you gaslit me, you did this, you did that, when there's nothing actually happening. I'm not talking right. about real allegations. I'm talking about just two people who disagree with each other. Yeah, the internet thing. They yeah, treat, yeah, yeah. yes, they treat that with that same level of seriousness when there's just nothing there. I wonder if this just applies more generally to the way terminally online people behave. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you understand the comparison I'm making. Yes. The, the shitty art that gets treated like the Sistine Chapel and the non-existent drama that gets treated like the literal end of the world. There's some through line here that I'm failing to articulate, but like everybody knows what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all, it's like a, it's like teenagers. It's like a teenage yes, perspective there we on go. everything. <laughs> yeah. It's just recess. Yeah. It's fighting at recess. That's all. Yeah, yeah. it's really, it's like that there has to be some value uh, to, to our lives. And it's for a lot of find people, someone who can draw. When one of you <laughs> can draw, you can fight. You fight me. Fight me. I have nothing to do today. Fight me on something. <laughs> but please know how to draw. Yeah, well, yeah. No. I, I, I think it's interesting that you say, uh, kind of like with the drawing stuff, because also the thing I was gonna uh, say earlier was, uh, the art is this, the fighting, the the drama, the creation of a story. It's it's like it's really interesting the way people interact with online drama. It's like watching a soap opera. These people uh, need to get into into wrestling storylines. I honestly think it would displace the emotions really well. I'm not even joking. What's interesting? Like how many of them into were into WWE, wrestling, right? Yeah. 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 No, like, that would be interesting. Uh, I, I feel. I feel like it's. Uh, it's just. It's ego. It's uh, like that teenage behavior. It's people that never grew up, and it, it's just a mixture of all of that together. And it just. It's an implosion because. They they take these other people like Leo Convoy or Hopeless Peaches and they put them on a pedestal and now so now they're queen or king and they're like the loyal subjects and it becomes this it, it, it's like what Mitch uh, I mean what Beckett said it's like a, it's like Game of Thrones it's literally like Game of Thrones but with retards like that that's that's what it is it's like you stabbed me in the back and uh, you gaslit me and uh, now I'm gonna destroy your reputation. I am beyond done with people who use the word gaslight to describe a minor <laughs> disagreement because I could barely understand that word when it was first happening because there's something wrong with me and just the way that I understand language. You yeah. people are making it so hard for me to function every time I open Twitter. Do you understand yeah. the effect you're having on me? Like, stop. Use yeah. a real word. Yeah, this this drama, completely retarded, uh, completely dumb. Uh, you, uh, Frankie, you know a lot about the deviant art stuff. Is there any crazy deviant art? stories you wanted to talk about because this is the reason why you wanted to be on a podcast to begin with right yes um okay. i actually had a really interesting thing happen over the last week mm -hmm. so um as you mentioned before i've been doing shorts and i've been building up to doing like an actual youtube video because i'm trying not to be a coward and just get started with that already and uh Basically, I just take the same topics, but I'm trying to find something that would be worthy of like a 10 minute video. Like what's a weird, what's like a deviant art tier fetish that's worthy of an elaborate discussion and not just like a 60 second deep dive. Yeah. And the first place my mind went was whatever happened to that guy who's like obsessed with commissioning people to draw women buying Wonder Bread in the store? Because <laughs> a lot of people have vaguely heard of him. Maybe you haven't judging from that laugh. But no. 
this guy, he's real, he's been around, and he's been haunting people since, like, 2016. Um, and he's just, he's quite a mystery. So I had the opportunity to actually talk to him on Discord last week and just, like, pick his brain about everything. Um, this isn't DeviantArt drama so much as it's just fascinating. But if you don't know the story, um, I can tell it to you in really short order. Uh -huh, There's this okay. guy. His name is Merlogic. That's the name that he goes by. Yeah. And he has one of the most unique fetishes in the world. He might be the only guy that has this very specific fetish. He loves to, and it's non-sexual, like we discussed before. He loves to watch women, in not in real life, like in art, yeah. uh, be mean and cruel in a corporate way. Women who hate the environment, women who love deforestation, which I didn't know was an interest that anybody could have. Um, and specifically, he's particularly obsessed with scenes of women in the store wearing the full 80s uh, shoulder pad corporate getup, mm -hmm. buying like surreal amounts of Wonder Bread and just stuffing them in their shopping cart. And it, like, you know, the scenery in these commissions, um, it's like dreamlike, like it's really weird. You would just, it's it's not even the fetish itself. It's also the, the aspect of the fact that this fetish is like completely non-sexual. Like, yeah, the women are curvy and they're like mom coded and a lot of people are into that. But yeah. so there's that. There's the fact that this is the most unique fetish probably ever. And there's the fact that he, I, I asked him, you know, there's a lot of speculation as to how much money you spent on this. Uh, there are threads that are, have now been archived on Funny Junk of people just discussing this crazy guy and how he dropped like four to five figures, which is a, you know, that's a demented amount of money. But I crawled through Google Images and I tried to find every unique commission of his that I could. And I have at least 200 in a folder. So clearly there's just tons and tons of them. And he was like, yeah, I'm going to level with you. I have no much. I, I have no idea how much money I spent. I've been doing this since... Around 2016, four to five figures is probably no longer even accurate. Oh, my God. And it's, I mean, it's its a really fascinating case because this fetish is, like, it doesn't hurt anybody, right? And it's one of those things where you can look at it and you just know. You just know in the back of your mind instinctively. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at fetish art. I don't know what it is. I don't know how I can identify it, but I can just tell. And the thing is that he never, it never quite goes away. This guy, he's actually still super active. A lot of people, you know, he has kind of like a meme legend status now. Um, he's no longer on DeviantArt. That aspect of the story is done. He deactivated a while ago. But he's still online and people give him free art all the time. Uh, and the AI art revolution, I mean, that emboldened yeah. him the way nothing else could. Yeah, uh, I'm reading something from the Reddit. I, I could uh -huh. be wrong here, but one of the comments said, correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't he rejected by some girl who loved Wonder Bread and now is obsessed with people like that? I seem to crawl, recall him saying that once. Is that is that oh, his that, backstory? Uh, it's not, actually, because I, I okay. asked him and he says that there's like a lot of people speculate a lot because the story is just so strange. Yeah, but it's not the case at all. Um, he says that he feels that he always had some fixation like this, but it started... Uh, when he was watching Captain Planet when he was a kid, mm -hmm. Dr. Blight, the yeah, blonde yeah, yeah. woman. Yeah, The blonde okay. thing, by the way, is a coincidence, he insists. Um, but Dr. Blight and just her total cartoonish disregard for all things natural and good and her need to destroy the Earth. Yeah. Um, and also Dee Dee from Dexter's Lab and just the way that she was a bimbo and destructive and had absolutely no regard for the chaos that she caused in other people's lives. And it all came together for him in this very weird way. And um, I suspect, because even he says he doesn't really know, but I suspect that the Wonder Bread thing just happened. That's mm -hmm. just where his brain kind of latched onto. And it just, it just became an entirely different entity from there. Wow. Oh, shit. Uh, but he's like, a fascinating guy, and his, I, uh, shameless, extremely shameless plug, but as, like, the <laughs> first actual video on my YouTube channel that is coming on Friday, and it's been very interesting to research, and I think it'll be an interesting watch. I, I'm, I'm definitely, I'm definitely really interested in something like that. Uh, I, I like the, I like hearing about lore, like, crazy, weird, random stuff like that. I think you got something, I think you got a formula down. 
Uh, you for would stuff not like believe this. the fetish war that exists out there, dude. It is fucking crazy. And it keeps <laughs> being made. Verbal Ace just happened. This shit yeah. is literally happening as we speak. There's someone developing a fetish right now that no one has ever heard of in their lives. And they're going to post that shit on Twitter in like two months and I'm going to cover it. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's just how it's gonna go. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I think um, I think that's really fascinating in the sense that I don't know. The, the weird thing is, right? It's like a lot of these people get attracted to cartoon characters as a kid, but like mm -hmm. you know, you, the the norm, well, not the normal, but the abnormal thing usually is like, oh, well, my mom was very overbearing, so I like overbearing women or something like that. But no, it's like, oh, this character in a cartoon uh, it w it was a, a rich socialite who uh, looked down on people. So now I'm attracted to that. Uh, and I want to, I want to watch them buy wonder bread, uh, and look like a, a businesswoman or something. It's just, it's so fucking weird to me. <laughs> like, it's just that. Yeah. What's really interesting with him is that I think it's a lot easier for somebody to assume that, right? Because that's an explanation that almost part of the way makes sense. Yeah. The idea that just one day, cause you know, people, uh, people form fetishes, you know, largely by accident. Nobody wakes up intending to. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this is like some pop science stuff, but I've definitely heard this refrain before that there are a lot of people on DeviantArt roughly around my age, like I'm 25. Um, so when they were growing up, they saw a lot of cartoons, which uh, as, as a plot device, there was like inflation. Totally mm -hmm. Spies was extremely guilty of this. The Blueberry Girl in uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, right? Yeah. People will just come upon these things as kids and just too... Two neurons will just connect in quite the right way, and they'll have this fixation. And it's not their fault, and they're not like deviants or whatever. It's just something that happens to you neurochemically. Yeah. So it's easy with someone like him to assume, yeah, I watched Captain Planet, and I was eating white bread, and then something happened in my mind, and I grew up, and this happened. But the way he describes it is so interesting because he insists that it's much more holistic Mm -hmm. It's just much more about the idea of the cruelty of the women and how she might, how the woman might choose to buy the most processed, like, earth-destroying bread in the world. He actually went on about how uh, Wonder Bread is not only extremely artificial, but it actually requires palm oil in order mm -hmm. to make it. And palm oil is supremely destructive to the environment when it's extracted. Like, it's just, there's like a universe of explanations for his fetish. It's so fascinating. Yeah, that's... See, I, I wasn't expecting you to pull this one out. I thought you were going to say like, oh, there's this uh, weird dude who wears diapers and he wants to, he likes I to. Am not a, mm -mm, I am not about your regular DBNR drama because as soon as I hear, the, no, because as soon as I hear the word gaslighting, I'm out. Yeah. I don't give yeah, a yeah, shit yeah. and I don't want to know what you're talking about because largely speaking, it probably doesn't make any sense to a normal person. Yeah. But if you got like I a I feel fetish, very attacked right now. <laughs> <laughs> but if you've got some, as long as there's weird art and a weirder explanation. If you look into these stories, they're always fascinating. It's never mm -hmm. just, it's never just nothing. Yeah. Yeah. That, uh, it, the so backstory. That's my piece on DeviantArt. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's see what else though was there to talk about. Uh, you, did you have any questions about the commentary community at all that you wanted to talk about or anything like that? Cause I know you were asking me about stuff and I didn't know if you wanted to talk about it publicly. Uh, sure. So I tweeted the other day, just asking into the void, like, can someone please explain to me what Tipster did? I don't understand and I don't know who this guy is and I'm not going to jump on a bandwagon yeah. until I can understand because I, I don't know. I'm ext there's some kind of like, I I've mentioned this before, there's some kind of like drama apocalypse that's been happening in like the last five months. Yeah. Um, you know, you have like Vouch, Plagued Moth, this thing that just happened with the Minecraft guy. Oh, it's always the, like this. It's always yeah. like this. It's I didn't know ending. it was always like this. I guess maybe yeah. I just noticed it more recently, but it seems to me like there's never-ending drama. The Keffels fall out. So people are very quick to slander the name of others, and the problem mm -hmm. is that if you have a controversy or if you're friends with controversial people, there's a ton of guilt by association regardless what you do. Yeah. So my confusion was as to what exactly did tipster do and why did keffels throw him under the bus and is there i know i keep using this expression but i feel like it's the best way to describe it like is there a there there that's my question <laughs> yeah so uh just a little quick summary uh tipster is a commentary youtuber who was kind of like a like a commentary bro 
Uh, he was uh, in a group with Augie, Nicholas Diorio, Bo Blacks, those guys. So he would he would kind of like latch on to people. That Nicholas they were Diorio fighting. is the goat, by the way. I just want to say his <laughs> rape review is the funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, we, we we are a pro Nicholas Diorio platform here. No, he's uh, he's funny as hell. I really yeah, like so him. so he was like their friend. You know, he'd hang out. He'd uh, they'd make content together. They cover the same stories. Uh, and then at some point, uh, there was a situation where, and this actually revolves around artist drama. Uh, believe it or not, uh, there was Shocker. a there was a artist in our community. Uh, so Tipster had what you call the t- weird question. I know has Tipster ever DM'd you or interacted with you at all? Never. I, okay. I didn't even know who he was until recently. Because, like, you would be his type because he had this thing called the goth mommy. And he would interact yeah. with all these, like, goth, like, well, not some of them weren't even goth, but these goth girls. And they started calling him the goth mommies. And it just became this whole meme that Tipster tried to, like, play into. But then he got kind of set, he got kind of mad that people kept using the meme. It's a whole thing. But one of the goth mommies was a, uh, a Twitter artist uh, who has done some of our thumbnails before. Her name is Rum. At one point, she accidentally liked a picture that uh, was interpreted as being Lolly, uh, and it turned into a whole thing. So was it we... was it Lolly or? Yeah, I'll, I can. I'll get into that in a second. Um, Hi, my name's Beavers. It was Shodacon. <laughs> I was gonna get into. Hi, the Beavers. Thing. I'm glad that's the first interaction you've ever had. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm so glad this is how I get to meet you. No, the funniest part. That's comparatively (laughs) positive. (laughs) Beavis. Wait, you don't know the funniest part. The funniest part was like, when I DM'd him, I was like, hey, just make sure to introduce yourself when you start talking. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God, I'm sorry if I'm blowing out the the mic. I might gain up too high, but that... You're good. Oh my God. Okay, anyway, so so, so, the picture was, it was art of a child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Confirmed by the artist. Confirmed that's, by the artist, yeah. That's so disgusting. Rum, Rum says she didn't mean to do it. It was an accident. She was scrolling. She accidentally liked it. Instead of Tipster being like, oh, well, it's an accident. It was just an accident, guys. I don't like see the big deal. Like, she she didn't mean to do it. He goes, that's not Lolly. Uh, and you guys don't know anime. And here's all these, like, uh, <laughs> here's all these, like, uh, nubile women uh, that look like this uh, that are overage. See see my examples here? Here's Kiwi oh, she's, Sunset. She's, she's a 6,000 year old dragon, you guys. She just looks five yeah. years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's Kiwi Sunset. She kind of looks young, right? Well, everyone's attracted to her. Here's this e girl. Here's that e girl. And he just kept going and going. And the, the tipster has this cycle. It's like self sabotage, yeah. it's self destruction. It's even worse, Matthew. It's what? even worse. Yeah. Use the worst example that he used, right? When trying. Oh, and he's, he's done it a few times. He There's this girl. I think she's in America or something. A woman, she's not a girl, she's got like a, a disease that makes her not age, like age appropriately. So she's stuck in like the body of a yeah. 12 year old, but she's actually like 20, 20s 26, or she, something like that. Is she the woman who has a TLC show? I think yes. I know who yes. you're talking about. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. And so, so he used, Tipster, he Tipster would be example. like, yeah, he'd be like, oh, but look at her. She's of age, but she looks like a child. How would you know? Yeah, so he's doing all this, and it's like self-implosion. He's getting criticized from a lot of the orbiters in the community. And uh, eventually, it's it's revealed that while in a live stream with all of us, uh, that that it wasn't actually Lolly, it was Shotokan. And Tipster has to concede right then and there. And then he kind of drifts away from the community. And then two months later, he's interacting with Keffels and becomes Keffel's biggest cheerleader to the point where he kind of like pushes the rest of the community to the side and Keffels is going after Bo Blacks and Turkey Tom and all these guys and Tipster's not really speaking up about it because he was he's he was their friends before and it just doesn't make sense for him just to step aside while Keffels is doing what Keffels does. And so, so he's just homie hopping every time he gets yeah, yeah, into trouble. 100 percent a homie hopper. Yes. 100 okay, percent gotcha. a homie hopper. Yeah. And so he it just like he just becomes this big Keffels stan. And and it's so it, there's so there's so many hypocrisies because at one point Turkey Tom made a video in like 2019 and he made some jokes about uh, some Jewish jokes about like uh, the Israel I can't remember the name like there was a there was a boat that was attacked by there was a U.S. ship that was attacked by Israel uh, Israel's uh, army or on accident and some mm-hmm. people like reference that as like uh, why Israel is bad Turkey Tom made a couple jokes about that. Uh, everybody, uh, he was heavily criticized by one side. Like, um, wh- who's that, uh, who's that black guy? You can't guy? see right now, but my eyes are rolling into the back of my head. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no. So Tipster defended Turkey Tom at that point. The point, And, uh, later on when Keffels was criticizing Turkey Tom years later, 
Tipster is now on Keffel's side. And there's actually footage of Tipster from 2019 defending Turkey Tom. He's just a huge hypocrite. And that's oh, when the I, whole... I will say one thing. Yeah. Um, I am not a strong believer in, you know, you had opinion A back at some date at some time, and now you mm -hmm. have opinion B, and it means you're a hypocrite. I I mean, in his case, obviously, that's probably not what's going on, but yeah. um, I'm very much of the opinion that people are allowed to radically change their opinion, Absolutely, and it doesn't yeah. necessarily make them a hypocrite. Right. I, 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 totally, I totally agree with you there, but the fact is that our interactions with him, we think that he's just changing his I idealism for for what he is now like for well, that's now what it that sounds like Kefels. because he yeah. was he was all on the the only the only thing i know like for certain is that he was a big friend and fan of keppel's and then i don't know in what manner and you can tell me this next if you want but mm -hmm. i understand that keppel's threw him under the bus now he's kind of got no allies yeah, yeah Keppel's, well, Keppel's it, it, throws it, it, everyone it, it, under the bus yeah, <laughs> well, actually, like, he, ah, no ah, keppel's threw him under the bus and he went right back so like he was just like oh sorry keppel's you know that's what happened because the whole vosh the lolly mm -hmm. thing there uh, tips your that, that's yeah. I actually do know about that, but I have I have kind of a related question. Sure, maybe you can answer this one after this. Go for it. Um, can anyone explain to me why Keffels has such? A, how does Keffels have like this amount of influence? Because she seems to be largely disliked by everyone, and mm -hmm. I'm not saying that to be mean, but that's the perception I have as an onlooker. Mm -hmm. Ooh, this sounds like a Twitch poll question. I ain't answering this because I'm gonna get the channel taken down. Okay. <laughs> okay. You don't have to answer in any kind of specificity. I'm just this is yeah. No, I, like, I, I everything... won't go on as long as I won't go on as long as Matt did about fucking tips. So yeah, fuck and, me. But <laughs> the, the linchpin that I just don't understand is like a lot of this stuff comes back to Keffels, and I just yeah. Who care? Like why? So so the why is Keffels people, the center? So, so the reason people care about Keffels is pretty simple. Uh, Keffel's got a lot of attention quite quickly uh, through Twitter. Uh, that she's been a content creator doing Twitch stuff for quite a while, uh, but she started ratioing people, and then she claimed that she got Destiny uh, banned from Twitch. That was like the major claim that she made. Uh, it's it's also probably bollocks, but it got her a lot of hate. At the same time, there is a large leftist community uh, in Twitch politics. Who were like, yep, trans creator, leftist, fuck destiny, um, and kind of threw a load of support towards her. When this happened, she got a lot of attention, particularly from online trolls, got a Kiwi Farms page thread set up, um, and from other websites as well. Uh, she got doxxed, all this other stuff happened. Uh, she l led a large campaign online to get Kiwi Farms taken down, raised uh, like $100,000. And uh, fled to Ireland, so she's in the UK now. Thanks, thanks for that, guys. Um, and uh, yeah, Sorry. basically, it's fine. It's fine. Fuck it. And the hundred k went up a schnoz. Yeah, like the the thing, the best way to put it with Keffels is this: she is probably um, she was held up as a victim of uh, transphobia online. Um, there's stuff that people forget about that with like how Kiwi Farms its reputation is for stuff like that. Like there's claims that Kiwi Farms has caused the death of trans people. As far as I can tell, there is like no evidence for this, by the way. Um, it's just something that keeps being said over and over and over again. Um so because of that, uh, and because she's got this profile, people care when she gets involved. The other thing with Keffels is she does this really frustrating thing of saying, hey. I don't want to do drama anymore. I just want to play video games and like make content on like her latest thing is like horror shit. Uh, and then like two days later, she'll be back tweeting about drama and involving herself. So yeah, well, all that's, your that's channels the are, are gone now, right? Like even the horror one because I I I did hear about that. Like everything's you know DFE'd. Uh, did it come back again, Beckett? Or I haven't. I'm going to be honest with you. I haven't checked because. I, like many people, have stopped caring. This yeah. is, the truth is that like Keffels is Keffels has hit the point in a lol cow cycle where people have just stopped giving a shit. Uh, yeah. because it's not entertaining anymore. It's like you need to give something fresh. Like at least King Cobra will go and like get laid once in a while or get drunk and try and like or make mead and try and give his like nephews who are like all underage his homemade alcohol. Like, there's something new there, or, you know, a new drama. But, like, with Keffels, it's the same story. 
at nauseum. People hate me because they're transphobic. I don't want to deal with this anymore. I'm afraid and scared and sad. And please, and just leave me alone. And then reinvolves itself. There's only so you know. It's like watching constant reruns. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Basically, Capels was a piece of shit to a lot of people and used the trans community for to as a shield. Uh, tried to take down Destiny, and they have no like they, they have nothing to stand on. Uh, they're they're just a they're just a horrible person. Like they, they and people a lot of people see that. And they've criticized Keffels, and it seems like Tipster is like the only one now that stands by Keffels. And yeah, that's where and we're at with that. What does Tipster, what does he get from defending this person who's clearly not Tip interested Tipster in wants, having anything to do with him? Tipster wants friends on the internet. Yeah, he, friend. I guess friendship by a virtuous person, maybe? I don't know. Like, like, I don't know, man. Yeah. I kind of feel bad for him. This is, this is like depressing. Ben, he's he's he does it to okay. I'm so not, he, not... so here's my internet rule. I I am I am not going to be I'm not going to feel sorry for people who just do it to themselves. They're given every well, also, opportunity to save themselves and or drag themselves out or be forgiven. That but, and the fact that I just remembered that we opened this with the the lolly Shota whatever art the yeah. defense of that. No, I rescind. I rescind. What I, just said. <laughs> I changed my mind from 20 seconds ago because I just yeah. remembered. It's very easy to feel bad for Tipster because he's a he, he does have that kind of like persona where it's like God, he just feels like a kicked dog, you know. Yeah. But then yeah, you remember just... like, oh, Lolly's okay. It's like, hmm, never mind. Um, permission to live revoked. Yeah, he's like that guy that never admits he's wrong and will just uh, stop talking to you instead of like being like, oh yeah, I was wrong. My bad. He's like, it, it, he'll he'll take any take uh, and he'll just bury himself. And at some point, he used to be the guy who would do that. And everybody would be like, all right, well, it's just tipster being tipster. And then he kept doing it and people just got tired, they're tired of it. And they just were like, I'm, I, I just think he's a retard. And he's kind of become a commentary low cow at this point. And that's what, what, yeah, I think about. a great, a great tip stock was when he, um, when he decided he was an alcoholic. If people describe it, your life as having arcs, it's probably so <laughs> over. Yeah, that yeah. just occurred to me. He decided he decided he was an alcoholic because he was taking shots on stream. And then is that, wait, a isn't months, that like a bannable offense? Not like, on is YouTube. that allowed? Not on, not YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. on Twitch. On YouTube it's allowed. Oh, um okay. and then so he was taking shots on stream, so he was drinking a little bit too much. Um and then he decided he was an alcoholic, and a couple months later, he had a healthy relationship with alcohol again. Yeah, yeah. So he, he does stuff he, like that. He did a he did a full like a, what's a seven step plan in like two months. Yeah, he got through it. He beat that alcoholism. Are Are you familiar mm. with uh, Mama Max at all, Frankie? Oh my God, this is like my favorite story of the last couple. I, I mean, I, I guess that that's like a shitty thing to say, but it, I've been <laughs> so fascinated because. To loop back around to what we were talking... Wow, I, my accent just changed. That was so funny. To loop back <laughs> around to what we were just talking about at the beginning. Um, he's such a good example of, of this story that has tons of these smart-sounding words. And there's just nothing there. Mm -hmm. There's no hard evidence. I, I watched his videos with this girl, Spencer. Um, I, I just... He's such a perfect example of using all of these very serious words... To describe yeah. what is potentially a very serious situation, but there's just nothing there. And I'm not saying that this Camden Gerard Davis guy is innocent. I don't feel that anyone, especially Mama Max, has requisite information to make such a claim. Yeah. Innocent or guilty. But this thing is crazy. And yeah. it's it's insane the way that this completely obliterated his reputation. Mm -hmm. So I can explain to you through Mama Max why tips are, why we find tips are annoying. Back in yes, December, please. That's back in December, <laughs> December of 2021, everybody was criticized. Like there were some people criticizing Mama Max for the wake up YouTube thing or whatever. Tipster was one of them. He went on this huge, uh, he went on this huge tirade about Mama Max. Started fighting with him back and forth. Uh, invited him onto his show, but uh, that never happened because they kept fighting on Twitter. And then Tipster just he had a he had a hissy fit. Uh, and it's like I'm I'm not feeling good, guys, and I, I don't really like what's going on here. Uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not I'm not dealing with this anymore. And he deactivated, and then he goes and DMs Mama Max and apologizes. To which Mama Max uses that apology against him in his video. So that happens, right? Now we we fast forward back to now where Mama Max is getting just destroyed. Tipster tweets out something like, "Yeah, 
we I, I saw this from the beginning. Yeah, like I, I know that I knew that this would happen, or like that this is how this is. I, I'm just glad to see that something's happening now. And he does like a weird gif of like a crow bowing and stuff. Like I was right all along. Meanwhile, he was the guy who totally like bent over and apologized to Mama Max when guys like Tommy C were re really criticizing him. And Tommy C took way way more shit than Tipster did. And that's just kind of like what Tipster is. He goes after somebody. He he apologizes and bends over. And then when they get into shit, he he has his moment where he gets to like take his victory lap. But he didn't really do anything. That's in a nutshell. That's why we find Tipster annoying. I I, I hope that makes sense. <laughs> I understand that. Yeah. The the through line here seems to be just be for I guess for the whole episode, right? Like yeah. hypocrisy and people who take themselves so seriously to the extent that they're just delusional. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. All right. I will so say, I got to state this for the record just like real mm -hmm. quick this Mama Max thing. Yeah. I was not shocked when all this came out before because yeah. as soon as I saw his channel for the first time and I heard this ridiculous voice filter like i could not get past it i could i just i don't know it gave me the weirdest feeling <laughs> it's not yeah. shocking to hear any of this it's not shocking to hear that it's all like largely a fabrication it's like if you gotta if you gotta shake me awake to make me take you seriously with this hotline miami larp and the deep voice thing like mm -hmm. it's so over dude like give it up he's like he's like a filmmaker who never watched any movies that's that's what i always kind of saw mama max as he's like he, he like pretends that he's a filmmaker, but in reality, he just he knows nothing about anything. He just wants to look cool, you know. So he could it, be very competent if he just gave up the uh, the the trying to be the most virtuous. There's plenty yeah. of stuff you can report on that doesn't have real life consequences <clears throat> if you fuck it up. Yeah, imagine if he took that character he does, and but he did like weird like brony drama or like weird like like group <laughs> you know stuff like that. You know that would be interesting. Uh, but yeah, um, Frankie, is there anything else you wanted to bring up before, uh, we end the podcast? Um, no, this was super informative. Definitely <laughs> learned a lot. I have to be yeah. honest. I still don't totally get the, the Lyo drama, but I'm like just a little bit more informed and th that's what counts. Yeah. In fairness, I don't even get the Lyo drama. It's, either, it's, so. it's amazing how like yeah. nobody, still nobody yeah. understands yeah. like what no. the fuck actually. <laughs> no. Uh, what, so what are your plans for your YouTube channel? Like, uh, what, what you're going to be doing in the future? I'm hoping if I can pull this off, uh, long form, like mm -hmm. uploads every week, Fridays seem to be the day. I'm working, like I said, on my first video now. You know, I'm kind of coming out swinging because I'm really excited about this interview with the Wonder Bread guy. I, yeah. I, I cannot believe I even like got the opportunity to talk with him. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. And also, we did not actually end up breaking 10K during the course of this chat, but we're at 9,991, so we're Holy we're shit, that's so close. You're going to get there by the time, like, in an hour or something. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's really exciting. Um, well, I hope to just keep making content about weird art and weird fetishes and people on DeviantArt, and we'll see how it goes. Heck yeah. I tell you what, if we ever have any weird art that comes our way, we definitely have you on again to explain it to us, because... Yes, uh, please. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Well, I, I wanted to thank you for coming on. I greatly appreciate it. I'm sorry Mitch couldn't be here. He's the one who kind of like got you like interacted with you. But uh, yeah, well, uh, hopefully in the future he can come on and tell you his uh, uh, sonic boob boob story of his tattoo. Please. That's actually how <laughs> I found him through the tattoo. I totally forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll have you on again. We'll cut and he'll tell you that story. But uh, again, thank you. Thank you so much for having me on. This is my first podcast. Fuck this, yeah. This is like, this is such a milestone for me personally. Like you don't understand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, I saw, um, I saw really you interact. Cool. I saw you interacting and you're like, I'm going on my first podcast. And then the cucked podcast came underneath and was like, you can come on. They swooped well. in. Yeah. <laughs> They're insane, by the way. Uh, I mean, uh... We we know them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you'll have you a make your own decision. Podcast. You make your own decision. <laughs> That's a <laughs> deeply frightening statement. I'll think about it. Yeah. We got one commentary guidelines warning so far on this channel, and they're the reason why. Okay. <laughs> okay, noted. Yeah, yeah. Hey, but don't <laughs> but let again, us make your um, decision. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was, it was great meeting you guys. It was so great getting to speak with you about a topic that I'm deeply passionate about, which is DeviantArt and the never-ending coom. And this was really awesome. And thank you for having me on. And I hope to be uh, on again soon. Uh, absolutely and uh hopefully uh maybe we'll cross paths paths maybe you'll get in some weird drama or something no, please no <laughs> please you'll no. become tipster's got new goth mommy oh my god <laughs> lord anyways thanks for coming on frankie i greatly appreciate it all right talk to you again soon hopefully yep, yep. have a good one you too Bye bye bye
All right. So there we go. Fucking Mitch. God damn it. <laughs> uh, all right. Let me uh, look up these bad with monies and then uh, I'll, I'll get that up. Video is doing good, guys. Star drama. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. Going we're going to cut the spot out. Uh, maybe yeah, not. Cut the spot out. Maybe not. Oh, no, uh, we're not going to cut the spot out. We're just going to leave it in. Yeah, we're no, leave just it leave it in. Because yeah, uh, because as one of the comments said, uh, Matt doesn't play his uh, artists and editors. Um, well, the reason that... why <laughs> I don't pay the artists or editors is we don't make enough money right now because we're bad with money. Those who are also bad with money, Ringtail, Stefan Corbino, Joe Vile, Channel Has Been Deleted, k Cast, Pigeon Salad, Echo Tragedy, Brooke A, Strictly Patrick, Fresh Brewski, Jacob Thomas, Reynolds Hughes, and Mame. If you want to be bad with money, you can pay $14.99 a month, get your name said after every podcast, every live stream. Can't afford that. There's the Beaver Lovers, which is $9.99 a month. Gets you into priority calls, as well as early access to podcast episodes. And if you can't afford that, the, the normal rate is the Stumpies. $4.99 a month gets you access to membership live streams. Uh, membership episodes and paywalled uh, text channels within the NBCs within the Discord server, uh, and those are our membership tiers. And guys, we're planning something big. All right. Uh, in fact, it might be out. It, it, it's probably going to be out soon when this episode is out. But the mango episode, trust me, guys, it's coming. Oh, it's coming. Uh, anything else? Beavers and Beckett. Bye, guys. Hi. <laughs> Bye. Hey, Bye. Bye. Now recording is always now now recording is always recording. Have a good one.